gonna take a nice ah uh, mm, beautiful swig of ice cold water from my coldest water bottle affiliate link in the description by the way buy some good water bottles from it it's it's good it's good product good product you should definitely get one anyway uh today we're making fun of ben shapiro he's very dumb uh, he is also a nerd, and I like listening to videos where it's him giving, like, a speech or making an argument, except it's him stuffed into a locker, like a high school locker, and you can hear his voice echoing from inside. I really like those videos. They're pretty funny. The idea of Ben Shapiro being this, like, little uh, four-foot manlet conservative cuck that, uh, you know, we all make fun of is pretty nice. So we're going to be watching a pretty lighthearted video today by Benny. Uh, called U.S. President's Tier Ranking. He's going to rank um, U.S. Presidents on a tier list, so let's watch. I have been asked a million times who I think the top presidents were, so today they're going to tier rank the most notable presidents in American history. Before we jump in, this video is sponsored by Ring. No! Only I get to sponsor things in my videos. Shut the fuck up, Ben. Wait, is it... On this tier list, we have oh, okay. five tiers. We have S, which I suppose stands for superior since it's at the top of the list. And then we have A, B, C, and F. Now, I'm really missing the letter D here. I will admit to you because there are a bunch of presidents here who I think are actually D. But because they are D, I'm going to put them in the F category. We'll get to those. Wait, can't you just add a D tier? Like, don't most um, tier lists you find online? Um, he is missing the D. He does need some D in his life. But, like... Um, can't you just add, like, an extra tier to it? Like, I swear, in most cases where I've done, like, um, online tier lists, like, you can just, like, click a little button and add, like, another layer. Like, I I've done that before. I feel like that's the thing you can do. But he does need the D. He's really, he needs the D in his life. ...in a moment. So, let's start with the presidents who are at the very tip-top of the list, the best presidents in the history of the United States. Obviously, on the top of the list, George Washington, our first president, kept the country together, left office peacefully. The father of the country, a great man, easy pick, right? George Washington as number one. And then everybody knows that- the That's a pretty, like, I mean, I wouldn't expect anything different from Ben Shapiro. Like, yeah, okay, George- Yeah, it's, that's like, you know, a pretty safe bet. I mean, he owns slaves and whatnot, but yeah, sure. Like, first president, fine, yeah. The other president, there are only two presidents in this top tier. There are not three. Okay, I know the left thinks FDR's in that top tier. I know some people on the right think that Reagan's in that top tier. Neither one of them are Washington or Lincoln. Lincoln is the other oh. guy in that top tier beyond simply leading America through the Civil War and uh, to a new birth of freedom. It was Lincoln who, as a, as a thinker, helped to revivify the idea that the Declaration of Independence was an inherent part of the Constitution of the United States, that the two were inseparable, the ideas of liberty. How much you want to bet he's not going to say, also, he fought against the South, and, <laughs> and how, that he fought against the South, and granted, not till the end, but did take a huge part in ending slavery. We're not restricted to the Declaration of Independence as a non-operable piece of legislation, but actually infused the Constitution of the United States and that liberty principles were supposed to be extended to all people of the United States, not merely white Americans. So for that reason, Abraham Lincoln is top of the heap along with George Washington. So that's the easy part, right? That's, that's what everybody does. Washington and Lincoln are the two best presidents. There's very little debate about this. And then things start to get kind of interesting. So I'm going to sort of do this in um, reverse order. I'm going to start with the people who I think are just the worst presidents, like people who just were terrible. So let's begin. Where do we think Obama is going to be? Where do we think Obama's going to be? F tier, 100%, because he's black. The president who I think was I, I, pretty easily the worst president of the United States, without much of a question, Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson is a clear F. Woodrow Wilson is garbage. All right. Forgive me, chat. Um, I don't know anything about Wood, 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 Woodrow Wilson. Was he based or cringe? I mean, he was an American president, so probably pretty cringe, right? And he was fucking racist. Okay, I'm seeing. I'm seeing most people saying he was cringe. He's a Nazi. All right, I'll take your word for it. Agio Woodrow Wilson was a vicious racist who was in favor of radical expansion of the federal government. He believed that the state should have no limits on it. He was effectively a socialist. He believed that the administrative government of the United States should be run top down by the elites. He not only got us. What the fuck was that? I feel like I just got thrown into one of those things at a carnival that spins around super quickly and it like pins you against the wall and and like the G-force fucking sticks you to the wall and you can't bear to move. 
your body. What the fuck was that? Hold on. Can we re-listen to that and take it apart piece by piece? We're terrible. So let's begin with the president who I think was I, I, pretty easily the worst president of the United States without much of a question, Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson is a clear F. Woodrow Wilson is garbaggio. Woodrow Wilson was a vicious racist. True. Wait, Woodrow Wilson ran against Eugene Debs and the Socialist Party, right? What the fuck is he talking about? Just give me a second. Who was in favor of radical expansion of the federal government. Okay, Ben Shapiro would be against any radical expansion of the federal government. He doesn't believe that the federal government should be able to uh, assist or have any type of power over individual states. He's a big states' rights kind of guy, you know? Most conservatives are, so they claim to be. But in reality, what they want is for individual states to be able to say fuck you to the federal government and do whatever they want. And in most cases, many states, especially in the South, would choose to take up laws um, and, and, and pass certain bills that would uh, roll back protections for marginalized groups. So he's in favor of that. That's why he doesn't like um, the federal government. He believed that the state should have no limits on it. He was effectively a socialist. He believed... Effectively a socialist. Why was he effectively a socialist? He was that the administrative government of the United States should be run top down by the elite. He... Socialists believe that the government should be run top down by the elites? Conservatives, please define socialism challenge... 2021, please define socialism for the love of God. Not only got us into World War I, he then used World War I as a pretext to basically go after his political opponents with the Sedition Act. Woodrow Wilson was a horrible, horrible, horrible president. And the fact that for a long time he was considered one of our better presidents speaks to how dumb America's historical class is. The reason a lot of America's historical class likes him is because they, again, like the administrative state. The administrative state, for those who don't know, that's the idea the executive branch really should run the government, that the legislature is sort of a vestigial organ. The president should be, as Woodrow Wilson says, as big a man as he can be, as big a man as is capable of filling the office. He was a big fan of how German government was run. He was a big fan of the idea that the, the government was sort of the be-all, end-all, was Woodrow Wilson. Awful, awful person, awful president. He is definitely in the F category. Other presidents are in the F category. So this is where I really wish that there was like a, a, a D category right here. In, in uh -oh. what would be the D category, but we're... The Sedition Act was used against socialists? Wait, so he supported the Sedition Act, and this was used against socialists. Hold on, let's check it out. Oof. The Sedition Act was aimed at socialists and other vocal opponents of the government or the war efforts. In June 1918, a month after the passage of the Sedition Act, Debs gave an anti-war speech in Canton, Ohio, and was ar arrested and charged with 10 counts of sedition under the Sedition Act. Ah! So, a bill, or an act which was supported by Woodrow Wilson, was used to attack socialists, and the person that Woodrow Wilson ran against, who was a socialist, was the victim of that act and was arrested for sedition, but Woodrow Wilson was basically, effectively, as Ben said, a socialist. Nice. Gotta always throw it in there. We're going to have to push him into the F category because we really have no other choice. There is no D category here. Uh, LBJ definitely goes in that category, in that F category. So LBJ, awful president. The sole bright spot in the LBJ administration was a bright spot, and that was the civil What was Lyndon B. Johnson's meme? Was it like the... Did, was he the one that passed, like, the fucking civil rights bill? Was that him? I don't remember. Oh, God. I fucking hate American history. LBJ was one of the better. He passed the Civil Rights Act? Yeah, didn't he? Yeah, he ended segregation. He did. Oh, Vietnam was LBJ. That's true. Hold on. Let's look up Lyndon B. Johnson. Let's learn. Uh, all right. Uh, so he, he opposed racial segregation, signing civil rights bills to ban radical discrimination. Or racial. I always read radical and racial the same way for some reason. I don't know why. I always mix them up. I think it's dyslexia or something. I don't know. Um, to ban racial discrimination in public facilities, interstate commerce, the workplace, and housing. That's nice. Now look up, let's look up Vietnam. 
In foreign policy, Johnson escalated American involvement in the Vietnam War. In 1964, Congress passed the Gulf of Tong uh, Tonkin Resolution, which granted Johnson the power to use military force in Southeast Asia without ask, um, having to ask for an official declaration of war. So yeah, it just seems like in some uh, departments he was all right, like with the civil rights stuff. Um, and when it came to the... Um, uh, Vietnam War and other foreign policy stuff. Like many American presidents, he sucked ass. Rights Act, the Civil Rights Act, which is exactly right on banning all sorts of state practices of discrimination, is wrong when it comes to encroaching into private rights of association uh, and, and is wrong in some of its... The argument he's making here is that businesses should be allowed to discriminate against, like, black people. Um, like, you, they, he, Ben Shapiro supports the right for a business to say, no, we don't serve black people here. That's why he doesn't like LBJ. Like, you guys know that, right? That's what he's arguing right here. He believes that private businesses should be allowed to say, we don't serve black people here. I imagine his argument would be because the free market would then take hold and businesses that are willing to accept black people would then um, get a leg up in the economy because they would be accepting a larger amount of, um, you know, uh, they would be accepting a larger amount of clientele and people buying their product or whatever. And so then racist businesses would just die out naturally. But that's not exactly how it works, considering people who are very racist love really racist businesses and will go out of their way to support those racist businesses, allowing them to exist and thus uh, cultivating a culture in which it is completely normalized for there to be signs on the street outside of businesses saying no blacks here, no Asians here, no Hispanics here, no gay people here. Um, yeah. Ben Shapiro just doesn't like brown people. It's, it's broad outlines as far as how to deal with the private sector. Everything else is garbage. The, the extension of the welfare state is garbage. The Vietnam War and his strategy in pursuing the Vietnam War, graduated equilibrium, horrible, horrible garbage. Right, so LBJ. Yeah, so it's just like gen general, like, um, this is just like general populist shit. Like, oh, war bad, but also fuck poor people. Like, it's a mix of neocon shit and populism. Like, you've got the populism part, which is war bad, which is, like, pretty fucking, like, that's about, like, that's level one baby's first, like, populist take. And then also you've got the general just neocon fuck poor people take with the welfare state stuff. A terrible president. He definitely goes in that bottom tier along with Woodrow Wilson. Other people who belong in that bottom tier. And the much beloved FDR goes in that bottom tier. Despite historians' attempts to paint FDR as a wonderful president, it's pretty obvious that he lengthened the Great Depression by as much as eight years, according to a study from UCLA Anderson Business School through his. So I'm assuming this is like when Ben Shapiro says, despite historians trying to sh uh, to whitewash him, I probably I'm going to assume because this is what Ben Shapiro does every time he talks about something that it's pretty overwhelming consensus among historians that um, that he was like FDR wasn't that bad. Um, you know, is like a pretty decent president, but Ben Shapiro doesn't agree, and so he's going to try to paint like academia as being biased. He does that every time, uh, uh, like anything in academia disagrees with him. Hold on, I'm curious. Uh, yeah, hold on, wasn't FDR? He's the one who. Yeah, he's the one that signed the New Deal. The New Deal was, like, huge. The reforms and changes brought about by the New Deal were, like, groundbreaking at the time. Like, arguably saved, like, shit tons of people. Because at the time, America was going through the Great Depression. Um, okay, so... Yeah, the Great Depression was happening, and the New Deal did, like, a significant amount. Like, it is overwhelming consensus among historians that the New Deal was, like, what saved this country. Oh my goodness, Xander Hall, you didn't know that? I mean, like, I, I know a lot of these things, but I'm not just gonna say, say it without checking on a video. I'd be spreading misinformation if I did that. Um... But yeah, no, I'm I'm actually really glad that uh, Ben Shapiro is willing to just like outright say, now the historians are saying this, but they're biased because you know conservatives are very anti uh, academia. They always have been. Horrific economic policies. He basically portrayed anybody who was not under his thumb as a quote unquote malefactor of great wealth. He was a class warrior in the extreme. 
Uh, he really didn't know much about economic policy. Like, I'm glad that he was great on the radio, but aside from his pursuit of World War II, uh, that's pretty much it. Now, this is why, again, that D category would have been good because FDR as a World War II leader was good, except for, you know, the whole unfortunate imprisoning 100,000 Japanese Americans in, uh, in camps. That, that, that was not so good. But other than that, his World War II... Yep, every American president has always fucking sucked. Um, no, this is just... I think Ben Shapiro hates this guy because Ben Shapiro hates poor people, as, as we've all known. Do you guys remember when Ben Shapiro said that um, during the pandemic that we should all go back to work, and if um, the old people die, then it's okay because they didn't have all that much time left anyway? Do you guys remember that? I feel like we've gone over that on stream before. Um, ben Shapiro unironically argued that um, those who are more susceptible to dying from COVID are those who are like 70 and up. And uh, or 70 years old and older, and that most people don't live past like 75 or 80. So it's not that big a deal. So we should all just go back to work, let all the, the old people die. They weren't going to live that long anyway and save the economy. Yeah, I think, yeah, he, I think it was like literally he said burn through the, the old people in the population or something. Like he literally used the term burn through the population. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. People. I wish that he were in that D category, just like I wish that, that LBJ were in that D category so we could at least recognize the good things they did alongside all the bad things. But some people have FDR in like the top tier of presidents. No effing way. No way. Okay, other presidents who belong in that bottom tier of presidents. I'm putting Richard Nixon in that bottom tier really? of presidents. I think okay. Nixon is a terrible president. I know there right. are a lot of Republicans who have sort of a warm spot Base. for Nixon, mainly because uh, he was not George McGovern. But putting aside Watergate, which again is like the least of his sins, considering that LBJ bugged Barry Goldwater's headquarters in 1964. He instituted price and wage controls. He did not dismantle the vast government apparatus that was built by LBJ. In fact, he exacerbated that. He pursued the opening of China, which has resulted in the rise of a dictatorial empire uh, that, that now threatens American power in Southeast Asia. So uh, not... No. That's not the problem there. That's not what the problem was there. Don't get me wrong, China is dog shit, and it is really fucking bad. You guys know me, I fucking hate tankies and everything. But um, I don't think opening up China is what resulted in that. I feel like there are different measures that, that uh, America could have taken in regards to foreign policy that would have helped establish a more democratic um, and more egalitarian uh, governmental system, uh, governing system in China um, that would have made things a lot better today. I'm not a big Nixon fan. I know there are a lot of people who are. I'm not. You could plausibly put him in the C category, but uh, I'll put him in the F just to be even handed. And uh, finally, as the last person who goes in that F category, I well, no, sorry, there, there are two more for the F category. One is going to be um, Barack Obama. <laughs> so Obama goes in the F category. Because he's black. I think he was an awful president. I think he did horrific work, mainly with regard to his rhetoric. And in terms of his legislation, I think Obamacare was an atrocity. Wait, Obama's rhetoric? Okay, so for one, Obamacare was literally the only reason that shit tons of Americans, like how many was it, like eight million? Like, I think it was in the double digits in regards to millions uh, of people that were actually covered with health care. But Ben Shapiro hates poor people. Also, Ben hates Obama because he's black. And also, um, Obama's rhetoric was literally touted, even by right-leaning people, if they were like even somewhat honest, as being some of like, he was an amazing public speaker. Like, that was one of the things, this is like a, uh, a bipartisan opinion, I feel like. It is objective that Obama was a fantastic public speaker, despite his stutter. Um, in fact, I think the stutter added a bit more, like, um, uh, I would say charisma to his speaking. Um, he was an amazing public speaker. I, like, I remember um, Obama's presidency is one of the few presidents that, um, you know, like uh, Obama's presidential run is one of the first presidential runs that I, I was actually old enough to remember. I was eight, eight or nine years old when he was running for his first term. And I remember how fucking hyped people were about Obama because of how good his speeches were. He was able to get a crowd all riled up. He was able to get people excited. Obama's turnout, like, um, to, to vote for him was huge. It wasn't as good as Biden's because obviously people came out, well, they didn't come out, they voted through mail, but they came out to vote in droves for Biden to get Trump out of office. But like 
Obama's um, speaking and the amount of excitement and support he had was astonishing. Now, don't get me wrong. Obama was pretty bad, deported a lot of people, really bad uh, uh, policy in regards to um, uh, like foreign policy and stuff like that, especially in the Middle East. Don't get me wrong. But none of the reasons Ben Shapiro lists here besides maybe like he was a warmonger or something. Um None of the reasons that he gives here are going to be valid. And I think that his spending plans with, with stimulus and raising us to $4 trillion budgets, it's helped destroy the, the economic future of the United States. So that's bad enough. But between 2008... If Ben Shapiro puts Bush, the Bush that came before Obama, anywhere above F then, I know he's full of shit. If Ben Shapiro thinks trickle-down economics was like a good idea... Or, or that um, Bush's handling of our economy was better than Obama's, then you know he's just completely full of shit. And is either lying, has no idea what he's talking about, or both. In 2012, Barack Obama morphed from a president who sort of campaigned on almost a Clintonian third way as a guy who wasn't for red states, and not blue states, but the United States. And in 2012, he went just hardcore intersectionality. Anybody who opposes me is a racist. America can be divvied into various victimized groups that can be cobbled together in a new rising ascendant majority against the old America is extremely damaging. And um, I think that that is going to be the future of American politics for quite a while. I think the Democratic Party- Yeah, he's just mad about social progress. This is just him saying, that's a nice pause screen. He's just mad about social progress. That's his issue here. Already never quite got over the Obama coalition of 2012. They've been trying to pursue it ever since. And it has broken American politics in ways large and small. So Obama goes in that bottom category. And then finally, last guy who goes in that category is of course, James Buchanan, who is uh, the, the president just before the Civil War. Now to be fair, I'm not sure the Civil War happens because of James Buchanan. I don't think he does much to stop it. And so you have a bunch of events that are happening outside of Buchanan's control. Doesn't mean he was a good president, he was a terrible president. Um, there is literally nothing that a president, I mean, I'm sure James Buchanan was probably pretty bad, right? Like, fuck, you know, uh, 1800s president, you know, not 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 a good president, you know? not pro Old white dudes in the 1800s, generally not based, okay? Generally not based. Was It would it would have been the, yeah, it would have been the 1800s. Um, yeah, no. Um, I actually know a lot about the Civil War, done a lot of research about it. There is literally nothing that an American president could have done to prevent the Civil War besides saying, fuck it. All right, the South. You, there can be as many slave states as you want there to be, no restrictions whatsoever. That's the only thing they could have done. The South rebelled against the North because they thought the North was going to take their slaves away. And what the North did, I kid you not, was form a compromise line where there were no longer allowed to be any new slave states north of that line. They said, we're not going to take your slaves away. We're not going to do any of these things. Just there can't be any more slave states. And then the southern states were like, no, fuck you. We want more. We're going to fucking secede and start a war with you now. Shut the fuck up, Ben. President. Okay, so now we've got your top category. And we've got the, uh, the F category. Now we're going to do some people who are in the middle. So in the A category, which is just below S, we'll put Calvin Coolidge. So Calvin Coolidge, really underrated. Wait, hold on. What did Drex say? Um, male students were able to get arrested for false accusations under Obama's title... Uh, 11, I believe that is. Hold on. Are you... Wait, what? Hold on, I'm curious. And analyzing the Department of Education's final title, uh, 11, I believe it's 11, Rules on Sexual Misconduct, May 6, 2020. The um, Department of Education released its long-awaited Title 11 Rules on Sexual Harassment. This was the culmination of a process that began nearly three years ago. In 2017, the department withdrew the Obama administration's guidance documents on the subject. A year later, like, uh, regulations were immediately condemned by a number of women's advocacy groups and by leading Democrats, including House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and former Vice President Joe Biden. The rules have already been changed in court, and Democrats— Okay, it sounds like this has been, like, pretty broadly criticized then. As we established the administration, court Obama administration launched sexual assault. 
college women sexually assaulted in college as a consequence of campus culture. Assistant Secretary of Education. Paradigm for secret messages designed to change the culture to the college. Okay, so it seems like the attempt here, it's nine. You took Latin, Zan. Yeah, but I don't fucking remember that. Yeah, ele 11 would be X, like the X and then the I. But yeah, it's like how, um, it's like how four is like the I and then the V and then the five is the V. It's, it's weird. Roman numerals are weird. So what it seems like is that, um, title nine was meant to try and help with the huge problem of sexual assault of young women in college campuses. But it seems like through the wording and the actual pragmatic application of this article, it resulted in some pretty negative um, outcomes that were criticized by uh, everyone from Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi to like feminist and women's rights groups alike. And president, because Calvin Coolidge is the last president in American history to truly understand that the presidency should not be a major factor in your life. Now, Calvin Coolidge was famously taciturn. They used to call him Silent Cal. There's a famous story about Calvin Coolidge where he was at some sort of dinner party and a reporter came up to him and she said to him, you know, President Coolidge, I've just made a bet with somebody. And she said, my bet is that I can make you say more than two words. And he said, you lose. And that, that was sort of how Coolidge was. But Coolidge also had a, a wonderful understanding of the Constitution and Declaration of Independence. He gave a speech on July 4th. Uh, and, and it's one of the great orations in American history about what America means and, and why the foundational principle. I just noticed um, Ben Shapiro's eyebrows are uncomfortably thick. They remind me of fuzzy caterpillars. Like, I feel like they're going to start crawling down his face and like onto his, sh onto his like elbows and then form like, uh, like chrysalis and then like hatch into butterflies as the video goes on. Bulls of the Declaration of Independence had led to the prosperity of the United States, how the freedoms and liberties guaranteed to individuals had led to the prosperity of the United States, that we were created by the Declaration, we were created by the Constitution, we do not get to create it. It's really, really good stuff. One of the tragedies of American history is that Coolidge stepped down and Herbert... Is Ben wearing makeup? I would assume. I mean, he's a high production value, like, he's got a lot of money behind him. I assume he's got, like, makeup artists that, that do him up for his show. I wish I had that. How fucking pog would it be if, like, I was having a bad skin day? I could get like a little bit of like uh, makeup for the camera to make me look better on on stream. All I can do is like wash my face and then go on stream, and then I look how I look. I've got like a breakout going on or something. I'm fucked. I look sh I look like shit all stream. Hoover took over, and Herbert Hoover was in fact quite a bad president. Who else do we have here? Well, I'll put Reagan in that A category. And now Reagan's big problem as a as a president was that's surprising. It seems like most conservatives pro like fetishize Reagan beyond um, Xander Hall. Lonnie could do it, yeah. But like, holy shit, I um, I, I, I'm not. I don't do that much prep for my stream. Like before I, I, I go up there. But yeah, no. Um, yeah, conservatives love Reagan. I'm surprised he didn't put him in S. But A makes sense. Of course. Oh shit, I nabber. What's up? iNabber's in YouTube chat. I'm going to go ahead and mod you really quick, iNabber. Um, uh, Xander Hall, give me your thoughts on the, or give me your hot take on the Gina Carano stuff. Isn't, um, isn't Gina Carano, like, kind of transphobic or something? I thought I heard about that. Don't take my word for it. What's going on with the Gino Car Gina Carano thing? I might, I might cover that after this segment. Um, what's happening right now? Oh, she's like a Trump supporter, right? Type it on Twitter. I found a variety article. I've, I just, I never, I, I've stopped trusting anything I see on Twitter. If it's on Twitter, I immediately Google whatever the topic is, and I find out that actually the opposite of whatever I saw on Twitter is true. Um, Mandalorian star Gina Carano under fire for controversial social media posts. She plays Cara Dune, Mandalorian, Garner Backlash on social media Wednesday for sharing several controversial posts on her Instagram story. Carano shared the post on her story late Tuesday night. One of the posts she shared compared today's divided political climate to Nazi Germany. Jews were beaten in the streets, not by Nazi soldiers, but by their neighbors, even by children. Because history is edited, most people today don't realize that to get to the point where Nazi soldiers could easily round up thousands of Jews, the government first made their own neighbors hate them simply for being Jews. That's... Partly true, that did happen. However, I don't think historians are whitewashing that. This is a pretty well-known fact. Like, I don't think a single historian on this fucking planet has ever said that 
the climate of Germany back during the days of the Nazis' takeover wasn't pushing the general population to becoming more um, antagonistic towards Jewish people and other undesirable, degenerate, whatever the fucks the Nazis called them. That's literally how the... Isn't that how Kristallnacht happened? Like, it was partly a shit ton of, um, like, Nazi party members as well as, like, people that had been radicalized through Nazi propaganda attacking Jewish businesses. How is that any different from hating someone for their political views? Ah, there we go. Ah, there we go. Anyone who tries to compare being an ethnic genocide to society's general dislike of the reactionary views of Trump supporters who are, by the way, not being attacked or um, persecuted in any way even close to being comparable with Jewish people. It's just the victim complex. Conservatives have like a hardcore victim complex, every single one of them. They'll simultaneously be the ones in power most of the time, as well as basically always being in power in media. I mean, I can't, there's not, there hasn't been a, a point in all of American history where conservative talk radio hasn't ruled the fucking radio, where conservative... Um, news stations haven't ruled TV, where, at least online, conservative content creators haven't fucking ruled the internet. At least right now, we're seeing a bit more of a kickback against that, because I feel like a lot of people saw how fucking terrible Trump is and are kind of, like, pushing against it. But for the most part, um, conservatives are usually the ones in power, and they're also the biggest victims at the same time. Uh, the, star the conservative Star Wars grifters are already releasing videos outright lying about the situation. I saw one YouTuber called the star that Star Wars girl lying about it completely. I've covered that Star Wars girl. Yeah, those people are fucking crazy. Like the fandom menace people, um, they're fucking nuts. Like I don't, I'm not like a big fan of the Star Wars sequels, but it's, it's just because I don't really find them all that like good or entertaining. They're like they're fun movies, but like they aren't, they aren't pushing like this fucking leftist communist SJW agenda or whatever. They're just fucking movies. Another photo on Carano's Car uh, story featured a person with several cloth masks covering their entire face and head. The caption read, Meanwhile in California. Nice meme. Both posts were removed from Carano's Instagram story Wednesday afternoon. Other posts, including a quote saying, Expecting everyone you encounter to agree with you, with every belief or view you hold is fucking wild. And one saying, Jeff Epstein didn't kill himself. Well, that's true. To be fair, it is, it is conspiratorial, but Jeff Epstein didn't kill himself isn't like a super fucking yikesy take. Um, have I Napper on sometime? Oh yeah, definitely. I'd love to have I Napper on sometime. Um, but yeah, the fucking... This is such a... Sometimes I feel like conservatives... Um, they'll say things that don't actually mean anything. It, it'll be like a... It's like vague tweeting. You guys know what vague tweeting is, right? We're like on Twitter... There'll be like a, um, you, someone will tweet something about someone without exactly naming them and they'll just vaguely sort of reference someone that they're pissed off, uh, off with at the time, but there's no substance in the tweet. I feel like saying when conservatives say things like this, it's vague tweeting. Expecting everyone you encounter to agree with every belief or view you hold is fucking wild. Nobody believes this. Nobody on the fucking planet thinks that everyone they encounter, or even expecting everyone they encounter to agree with them politically. What the fuck does this even mean? It, it's literally just a nothing burger of a statement. Many people on Twitter began using the hashtag uh, Fire Gina Carano, tagging accounts for Disney, Disney Plus, Star Wars, and Lucasfilm, and requesting that Carano be dropped from Mandalorian. Carano has courted social media controversy before, previously sharing misinformation about mask wearing and voter fraud. In November 2020, she made light of people, including their preferred pronouns in their social media, by saying beep, bop, boop in her uh, Twitter bio, which many fans called out as transphobic. Well, yeah, she is pretty transphobic. Carano later removed the words after she said she misspoke to her Mandalorian co-star, Pedro Pascal, who helped me understand why people were putting them in the bios. I didn't know before, but I do now. I won't be putting them in my bio, but um, good for all of you who choose to. I stand against bullying, especially the most vulnerable. And that's probably blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah. Like, she's just pretty fucking cringe. I don't, I don't know. Like, it's, it's up to Disney as to whether or not they fire her. 
whether or not Disney fires her is going to be based entirely on whether or not whether or not they think having her on the show anymore is going to affect their bottom line financially speaking. Um, corporations like Disney, um, this isn't like a socialist take. This is a pretty fucking well known take. Um, corporations typically ninety nine percent of the time don't act unless they believe it is going to affect their bottom line in a positive way. If it seems like the reaction to um, Gina Carano's statements online are going to harm their bottom line, like how many people are subbing to Disney Plus and watching The Mandalorian, um, then they'll fire her. If not, they aren't going to do it. Because, like, if they actually had to fire Gina Carano, it would probably be a pretty big pain in the ass for Disney in regards to, like, they would have to either kill off her character, just have her disappear or something, or come up with some ex explanation for why this, like, pretty important supporting character is just fucking gone. The Mandalorian's pretty good, though. I do like Cara Dune. She's a cool character. That he didn't get the spending under control. He was also saddled with the Democratic Senate for, for part of his term. In terms of breaking the back of inflation in the United States through his Fed chief, Paul Volcker, uh, in terms of radically lowering taxes in the United States and leading to two decades of growth, in terms of escalating defense spending, particularly on Star Wars, and breaking the power of the Soviet Union, Ronald Reagan goes near the top of the heap. So he ends up with Calvin Coolidge, who was one of his heroes, by the way, uh, in that A category. Uh, other presidents who end up in that A category probably have to put Thomas Jefferson in the A category for his his okay. federalist view of American government, well, what we would call federalist now, meaning he wanted to devolve more powers to the states. Also, the Louisiana Purchase, which is one of those weird moments in American history where Wait. he... <laughs> Didn't the... Um... The, the Louisiana Purchase led to... Oh, my God. We are just getting fucking... Yeah, listen. They're all fucking slave owners up until a certain point, okay? Um, we just keep getting the best pause screens, don't we? He looks like... Um, he looks like he's getting skull fucked on the right side of his head. Like this is the this is the face you make when a when a big old fucking cock is just drilling into your ear. Um, damn, it's like fucking with his synapses, making his eyes go. Ugh. Saw a good deal, recognized he didn't have. Oh yeah, fuck! I was actually making an argument there, and I forgot because I I was making fun of Ben Shapiro's face. Um, no, the Louisiana Purchase led to Manifest Destiny, from my understanding, which then resulted in the um, further extermination and relocation. Relocation being a, a more like running off the um, chasing off of uh, a shit ton of uh, Native Americans into really fucking shitty uh, lands that they did not previously live in or want to live in. Like, you do realize that, like, the vast majority of Native Americans lived towards the east. Because as you go further west in America, at least in the southwest, in the the Midwest, the um, the land gets more and more arid, and it becomes harder and harder to um, to engage in agriculture. So a lot of Native Americans lived in the East because this was a climate more suitable for what they needed to do. And so being, you know, forced out to the West was pretty bad for them. And there were all of these different negotiations and contracts and treaties that kept coming up. And um, they, like, they were like, okay, we're going to take this land but you can go on, you can just go a little bit west and now this land is yours. And they would, they would break that treaty and be like, okay, we're taking this land now, but you can go out even further west and we'll give you that. Oh, and if you stay, of course, we'll kill you all. Um, and we might even just kill you for fun. We're also going to rape your women and we might just take your children, might kill a few of you for fun again. You know how it is, right? Um, we're also, you know, we've given you diseases and shit like that. And we're going to destroy like anything that you leave behind, anything um, regarding your culture, anything like that. Like it was really fucking bad. The Louisiana Purchase was maybe not the beginning, but another step in a long line of a um, both literal and cultural genocide of the Native Americans. I know every time the word destiny is said, you guys all you guys all have to talk about destiny, the streamer. Constitutional authority to make it, and then went ahead and made it anyway. But Jefferson is widely regarded as one of our better presidents. I'll put Ulysses S. Grant, I think, in this in this category. So there's been a, a great sort of revision about how Ulysses S. Grant is portrayed in American history. Ulysses S. Grant originally was portrayed as sort of a drunken sot who lucked his way through the Civil War and then into the presidency and then was responsible for the rise of pork politics and sort of... Wait, did he misspeak there? Ulysses S. Grant lucked his way through the Civil War? What? 
He was a drunk. Ulysses S. Grant was a drunk. He did not luck his way through the Civil War. I've done research about it. Ulysses S. Grant was one of the few competent generals that the uh, North had during the Civil War. It's there's a there's a reason why Ulysses, um, yeah, unconditional surrender, Grant, yeah. Um, there's a reason why Ulysses S. Grant is considered like the most notorious of um, uh, of of uh, Union generals during the Civil War, and it's because holy shit, um, he was one of the few that were like actually getting wins. Um, Lincoln went through shit tons. I think Grant owned slaves. They all own slaves. Of course they did. Sorry for the rape. But, um, like, I believe it was actually Ulysses, it was, it was Grant leading a counterattack on, um, Robert E. Lee's direct assault on the Capitol or attempted assault on the Capitol, which they failed at, by the way, until 2021 on, uh, on January 6th. Um, it was actually his counterattack that ended up probably winning the uh, the war for the for the North, which sounds like a fucking Lord of the Rings uh, story, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Sort of gilded era corruption. That's not really accurate. If you're going to remember Ulysses S. Grant's presidency for anything, remember it for the fact that he presided over Reconstruction. And one of the great tragedies of American history is that Reconstruction ends with Ulysses S. Grant's term in office, and uh, Jim Crow really begins and and gains. A serious hold and the KKK basically becomes a powerful force in the South after Ulysses S. Grant leaves office. Revisionist historian. Yep, got a got a got a virtue signal there. Got a got a virtue signal. Oh, the KKK is bad. Yep, I got you. I got you, Ben. Ben's are now now kind of looking back on the, the Grant era and realizing that he was a, a stalwart defender of uh, freedoms being extended to newly freed slaves in the South. B presidents. So people who are like, okay, you know, kind of okay. And he owned slaves, which is pretty cringe. Okay. So I'll put JFK in, well, nah, you know, I'm putting him as a C. JFK goes as a C. One of the more overrated presidents in American history. Obviously, history has been more kind to JFK because of the assassination than it otherwise would have been. The man was responsible That's for- true. I'd say that um, this is true, basically, everyone. When, if, if you were, like, kind of a, you know, not that great person, and you end up getting killed or hurt, usually it's killed, then all of a sudden everybody likes you. It's true a wide variety of debacles during his first couple of years in office, including the Bay of Pigs debacle. However, he was a fervent anti-communist who did cut taxes. Um, but as far as him being like one of our better presidents, I don't see any evidence of that. By the way, our, our engagement in Vietnam begins with, with JFK. It does not begin with LBJ. Let's see, Grover Cleveland, we'll put in the, the B category. So Grover Cleveland, the only president to serve twice non-consecutively. Grover- I mean, yeah, I would put JFK in, in F. Wasn't, um, wasn't the JFK era the... Um... Wasn't that when uh, McCarthyism started? I'm pretty sure that's when that started, right? Fuck, I need to brush up on American history a lot more. Hold on. No, it was Kennedy. Yeah, the, the McCarthy era was in the 1950s. That was Kennedy. Sorry. Wrong one. All, all fucking old white guys that I was not alive when they existed, okay? Let's just... Let's chill out, okay? Cleveland uh, was responsible for making sure that the federal government did not outgrow what it was supposed to be. He um, famously rejected a stimulus package directed at uh, Texas. JFK supported the civil rights movement, though? Um, I mean, so here's the problem. Um, around this time, especially, like, in, like, in more, like, populous parts of the country, like in cities and stuff like that, it started to get like really, really popular to support the civil rights movement. This is a sort of a tipping point where if you were running for president, you had to, at that point, you basically had to openly support the basic principles of the civil rights movement. Like, it would be like saying that Joe, if like in 50 years we're like, yeah, Joe Biden was this radically progressive president because he supported, um, uh, uh, a public option for for uh, medical uh, uh, for like Medicare, medical care, or health care, right? When in reality, right now, the, a public option is unbelievably popular among Democrats and even Republicans. Maybe not like unbelievably popular among Republicans, but still pretty popular. It's like okay, but like, are we really gonna like tout you as being this like innovative fucking radical? 
uh, progressive when you were advocating for a policy that was basically the the minimum of every single other candidate running against you at the time uh, on the Demo in the Democratic Party? Like, come on. This drought relief saying that there is no constitutional warrant for this, which is something you'd never hear from a president today. He goes in the B category. Uh, I'll put William Howard Taft in the same category. William Howard Taft was a far more conservative figure than Teddy Roosevelt. We'll get to Teddy in just one second. I think Medicare's uh, popularity is overblown. Um, Caesar, you're partly right about that. Medicare for all is nowhere near as popular as people make it out to be. We're going to talk about that more in the next segment. Don't worry when we get to populism. But um, public option is really, really popular. When people say that Medicare for all is popular, they're actually talking about a public option. They don't know what they're talking about. They're, they're either misled or lying to you. Um, even among Democrats, uh, Medicare for all isn't that popular. It's the one that's like extremely popular is the public option, Medicare for those who want it. Well, William Howard Taft uh, was a, a sort of retrenchment of traditional Republican values. He went on to serve on the Supreme Court of the United States, so sort of a figure that's been lost to history because, and, and people make jokes about him because he was- ex Medicare is, uh, is better. Medicare for all is better though. Didn't say it wasn't. Extremely fat, but the truth is that he was actually a pretty good president and if it had not been, or Teddy Roosevelt and his ego trips, then William Howard Taft would be more fondly remembered as the person who uh, defeated Woodrow Wilson in 1916, which in uh, 1912 rather, which would have uh, changed the course of American history for the better in a lot of ways. Um, Harry Truman is a, is a B president. He tends toward the C. Uh, I would say that he's a B president because of his uh, cold warrior nature. Um, Why is Medicare for all better than a public option? Um, I think that commodification of healthcare is a big problem in the sense that, and I, I'm not sure if I'm 100% sold like on the idea that Medicare for all is better than a public option. I think a public option has many things um, better, like that so has a lot of positive things above Medicare for all. But um, it seems like from my understanding, there are certain things you don't want. Um, you don't want to be commodified in the sense that you don't want like rich people to have better access to this than um, anybody else, right? Uh, and I would say one of those things is healthcare, right? I don't think that it should be like the bottom of the barrel or the bare minimum for poor people to have access to, but then like in regards to rich people, they can get like fucking, you know, immediate super fuck, they can pay extra because they have the money behind them to pay extra for uh, better treatment better, faster, whatever treatment. I don't know if that's like the best way to go about things, but I don't know. I've heard convincing arguments on both sides of the debate. Super ACP, thank you for the tier one sub. I really appreciate it. Oh yeah, I just realized I get donate donations sometimes. I forgot about that. Um, so all the poor sick people are shoved into public plan, which means it's underfunded and overburdened. Well, from my understanding, um, I've talked to a lot, um, uh, Pseudosia or Liz about this. And the way that we would pay for Medicare for all would involve um, not drastically, but still significantly increasing taxes on the middle class as well. Not because just for handling people. of the end of World War II. I have a personal fondness as a Jew for Harry Truman, as is virtually all American Jews do because of his willingness to uh, signal American support for the establishment of the state of Israel. The reason he, he doesn't get higher on the list is because he had some dictatorial tendencies with regard to uh, unions. Uh, there, there's a, a famous steel case in which he intervened in a fairly illegal way. Uh, and then not only that, his policy toward China was really bad. He should have provided significantly more support to Shanghai Shek in the face of uh, the Maoist revolution in China. His failure to do so was instrumental in the rise of communist China. Also, his handling of the uh, his handling communist China. Once again, conservatives, please define socialism and communism challenge 2021. It has been uh you know, a few hundred years going now, they haven't managed to succeed. Maybe 2021 will be the year where conservatives can actually define socialism and communism. Maybe one day. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not holding my breath, but maybe one day they'll actually be able to define it. ...of the Korean War left uh, some things to be desired. President Trump, I think, is, is a B president. Mm. Now, I think in terms of policy, he'd be closer to an A. I think in rhetoric, the problem is that he's really been self-defeating, that the president, I think most people That's understand surprising. this. So he, Although, to be fair, Ben Shapiro doesn't like how fucking stupid Trump is. Ben Shapiro has said many times, to be completely fair, I've seen Ben Shapiro criticize Trump. Ben Shapiro is a piece of shit, and he's very wrong, but um, 
I don't think he respects Trump's inability to form a coherent sentence. I think Ben Shapiro knows how stupid Trump is, and he doesn't he is he doesn't respect that. This doesn't mean that I like have any respect for Ben Shapiro for recognizing that. That's like the bare fucking minimum. But uh, yeah, no, I think I think Ben Shapiro. Uh, I'm not surprised that Ben Shapiro would put Trump on like I, I was suspecting A or B. He's had some real rhetorical highs. I mean, he gave a great speech from Mount Rushmore, for example, that I talked extensively about. He gave an excellent speech. Oh, you mean the fascism speech? Oh, shit. I watched the, um, uh, of course, Ben Shapiro being, you know, a fascist, right? Um, Zionism is fascist, by the way. Um, the speech that Trump gave at Mount Rushmore was literally, like, textbook fascist speech. I think Vosh literally went over that speech on stream, along with Umberto Eco's um, twelve like points, like twelve uh, uh, um, aspects of fascism, and Trump like ticked every box, all twelve boxes. He ticked every single one: the machismo, the othering, the um, the uh, 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 framing your enemy as being uh, simultaneously weak as well as overwhelmingly strong, um, and, and a, a huge threat. The um, Oh, uh, what are they, like, oh, fuck. If you guys want to see more about it. Oh, he got 10 out of 12? Okay, sorry. 14 points. He got, like, 12 out of the 14 points or something. Yeah, sorry. I don't, I don't remember all of them. Uh, wish accounts between all GG sites were shared uh, anyways. It would increase tax on the middle class, but bring down their healthcare costs. No premiums, Andrew Hall. Yeah, Ash Fenix, that's the, um, the trade-off, right? So the middle class would have to pay more in taxes, but also um, there would be a broader benefit in regards to... Um, uh, 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 you know, healthcare cost in general, like they, they wouldn't have to go into debt should they have a medical emergency. Many Americans in the middle and lower class do experience a lot of medical emergencies and there aren't premiums, which they would save money on as well. In Poland, talking about the defense of Western civilization, he has said many great things in the culture war that I think are worthy of saying. He has also said some incredibly wild culture and irresponsible things over the course of his presidency. Uh, he has led to less support for his agenda items that should be wildly more popular. I mean, the fact is that heading into the election, over 55% of Americans said that they were better off than they were four years ago, and then he performed at like 46% of the popular vote. There's only one reason for that, and that's because he was so rhetorically irresponsible. Again, on policy, he got- I, To be fair, I don't think I've heard Ben Shapiro do the, like, the election was fake thing, or like the, the election was rigged thing. To be completely fair, I don't think, even on election night, I'm being over. I don't know if I'm being overly charitable to Ben Shapiro. Like this is the bottom of the fucking barrel. Like this is the this is like what you should expect from any human being. But I don't consider most conservatives to be human beings. So, um, you know how it is, right? Um, but like uh, even on election night when Trump was calling for to stop the count or whatever, um, Ben Shapiro was saying, "Do not stop the count." What ben, what uh, Donald Trump is doing is is uh, weak and stupid and anti democratic. And then on top of that, I don't think I've heard Ben Shapiro uh, try to, like, peddle the uh, rigged election bullshit. So, nice, Ben. You, 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 meet, you met the bare minimum, which is, to be fair, more than I can say for most, like, conservatives. Got to put Trump up with, with people like Ronald Reagan and Calvin Coolidge. Uh, in terms of rhetoric, you got to put him much further down the list. And so he ends up, on average, being in that B category. He is not an F, as so many people keep saying. That that's ridiculous. He is not even close to in the same category as uh, as people like Woodrow Wilson, for example. I did forget one F, by the way. Jimmy Carter was an F. Jimmy Carter was a garbage president. <laughs> so wasn't Jimmy all, Carter based? Interesting. Like all historians, I forget Jimmy Carter. Uh, Jimmy Carter was uh, not a a good president. Maybe slightly better than people recall, in the sense that he actually did try to bring down inflation in the latter years of his administration. Yeah, did so unsuccessfully. Um, but yeah. slightly better does not. <laughs> Nobody remembers Jimmy Carter. I, 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 at least from what I've heard, I think I've heard like fairly positive things about um, uh, uh, like fairly positive things about Jimmy Carter. Like he was all right. Um, in a better world, Ben Shapiro would be a comic uh, actor like Pee Wee Herman or Gilbert God uh, Gottfried. Yeah, that'd be a good meme. Uh, he's very short and kind of like a funny dude. You know, not because he he thinks he's he he doesn't mean to be funny. <laughs> like he's just kind of a uh, a low cow. Carter is basically a lib icon. Yeah, like in the grand scheme of things, he was he was aight. You know, he he was aight in regards to as far as presidents go. He was he was he was all right. I mean, good. He was still a horrible, horrible president. So horrible that he got himself blown out by Ronald Reagan, who was largely considered uh, by the media to be the, the sort of 
sort of jokey figure. We are going to jump into that C category, but first, let's talk about our sponsors. No! The ring. It's no. Only my sponsors allowed on this stream. Shut the fuck up, Ben. Um, slash Ben for special. Holiday offers keep your home safer and feel more secure with Ring. Ring.com slash Ben. Okay, C presidents. So I'm gonna put uh, Teddy Roosevelt in the C category again. Wait, how did he get a Ring sponsorship? Oh my God, it's almost like Ben Shapiro is one of the largest political figures on the internet and sponsors fucking like trip over themselves to get a spot on his show because conservatives have a massive multimedia empire while lefties have like a few creators who make, you know, a good amount of money on Patreon or through donations. Not me, but many. There are many. Can you define lol, lol cow if I'm spelling it right? I never heard what it means. Lol cow, spelled L-O-L-C-O-W, basically means like a person on the internet who constantly engages in all sorts of different um, shenanigans that are like funny. And so you milk them for lols by like talking about them. This term is usually used um, unironically by people on like 4chan and Kiwi farms whenever they're talking about like um, Christine Weston Chandler, Wings of Redemption, uh, Dark Side Phil, these people on the internet who basically have a cult of personality around them based entirely on hating them and shit talking them. Generally, the people who obsess over lol cows are like um, very just they're losers right the, all they have to do with their lives is like shit on random people on the internet yeah that's basically what a little cow is um using the term unironically is pretty cringe were there a d category he would be in the d category uh, teddy roosevelt was the first progressive president he foreshadowed woodrow wilson believed in the rise of the administrative of state course ben this, would put this massive federal put infrastructure him in a d he category trust busting which was really in Wait, he's not doing all 50 presidents? If he was doing all 50 presidents, I wouldn't cover this video. It would be too long. Responsible policy driven by uh, populist need to break up big companies. Eugene Olawene I in my YouTube chat says, Hey, Xander Hall, why did you leave details out? It looks like you are a liar. Why do you lie? What the fuck are you talking about? Tell me what you're talking about right now or it's an insta ban. Companies for no actual legal reason. Uh, I, I don't think that Teddy was a particularly good... There have only been 50, 45 presidents, though? Yeah, I know. Wait, Shaggy Games, you fucked that one up. You even tricked me. You know, there's 46 presidents. Right? Yeah, 46. Biden's 46. In your AOC video? Oh, no, I literally went over everything that's been confirmed about the uh, the Capitol riots. Oh, you're one of those crazy dumb fucks who thinks AOC's lying about her sexual assault in the Capitol riots. Yeah, you're, you're probably a Nazi. Nice memes. Good president. Uh, he did have expansionist tendencies. No, 45, Cleveland, Cleveland counted twice. Wait, what? No. What? Trump? Trump was 45, right? Just type it in chat, Lonnie. I can't hear you. He's right? Oh, okay. He's that, that definitely maximized the uh, territorial holdings of oh, the United States. Oh, because Cleveland's or weren't back to back? States. That's um, weird. But overall, not a big Teddy Roosevelt fan. Uh, James K. Polk uh, is an often neglected figure. Uh, he was responsible for widening the borders of the United States. So there have been 45 total? Wait... So they don't count re-elections that aren't consecutive as being the same president? That's really fucking dumb. That's really fucking dumb. Okay. States into Oregon and, and uh, the beginnings of, of places like California in, in, re in recognizing the Texas Republic, the Mexican-American War. He probably goes in the B category. Also, the, the only president in American history to run for one term. Um, and then win and pledge at the beginning. I'm only going to be a one-term president and leave, uh, which honestly, that, that'd be more of that would be good. Calvin Coolidge ended up doing that, but I don't think he pledged to do that at the very beginning. Uh, Dwight Eisenhower, a lot of people would put him in like the A category. I, I put him, I would even put him as a C. I'm not a big fan of Dwight Eisenhower's foreign policy. I think that Dwight Eisenhower's foreign policy, which was supposedly realist. Hold on, I'm just, I just want to see where he puts Bush. I want to see where he puts Bush. I don't care about Eisenhower. I just want to see... Where is he going to put Bush? Actually, in many ways, effectuated many of the problems that we see today in places like the Middle East. Uh, he supported the wrong side in the Suez Canal crisis. 
Uh, he basically did nothing as the Russians steamrolled the Hungarians during the Hungarian Revolution in in, uh, in 56. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually not a huge Dwight Eisenhower fan. Uh, overrated. Okay, sure. Uh, and then Come finally, on, in C presidents, uh, I'm going to put okay. George W. Bush as a C-level president. I would uh, give him that. largely but... because of the last right. three years of his administration. He started off as a sort of compromise not figure. Not too bad. And then he became... The, the guy who led us through 9-11 in what I think was truly heroic fashion. Ha! And then... Okay, dude. Yeah, all right. There we go. Yeah, starting the fucking Iraq war was something that's, like, overwhelmingly by literally everybody who knows anything about what they're talking about. Like, con like literally the consensus. We literally started the a war with the wrong country. And that... Oh, my fucking God. There is literally no justification on this fucking earth for the Iraq war, okay? The fucking, um... The uh, insane amount of, like, uh, nationalistic patriotism that was stoked up after 9-11, um, the, the use of 9-11 as an excuse, like, wait, is Ben Shapiro not in favor of, like, um, people like, uh, um, I bet uh, Ben Shapiro, I guarantee Ben Shapiro hates Edward Snowden, but loves Julian Assange. Guarantee fucking T it. I guarantee fucking T that, um... Ben Shapiro loves Julian Assange because he um, leaked that shit about the Democratic Party, but hates Edward Snowden because he leaked a bunch of, like, shit that the American government was uh, uh, doing because of the uh, um, measures taken by Bush after 9-11. Garen fucking T it. The amount of hysteria about Muslims that Bush and the Republican Party pushed after 9-11 has irreparably fucked up. Uh, uh, this country in regards to the amount of, like, Islamophobia there is. And by the end of his term, when he was, you know, saying that we had to step in and save capitalism by by destroying capitalism, and when he was not taking on the subprime mortgage crisis, I think, in a responsible way, uh, the, the big problem for... Oh, that's true. Ben did write a book where he rewrote history to give Iraq the nukes. Do you guys... Juan, what was the name of that book that Ben Shapiro wrote? I think it was, um, Jose did, like, a, um, did, like, an essay about the book. Yeah, no, 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 no. Ben Shapiro wrote, like, this sort of, like, um, True Allegiance. That's the name of it. True Allegiance. This book is so fucking terrible. It's ghostwritten, to be fair, but Ben Shapiro obviously had, like, a lot of, um, hold on. True Allegiance. It also got, like, fucking review bombed, I believe. Oh, no, it's, yeah, 22% of people liked this book. Oh, God. New York Times best-selling author Ben Shapiro's new novel asks how close we are to our country's collapse, and will we be able to stop it once it begins? Um, basically, it's about, like, there's multiple main characters, but, like, the main main character um, is, like, this fucking general fucking, like, white dude, uh, like, brown hair, American white dude action hero who's like a soldier in the, I believe he's either in the Marines or in the army and he's going over to Iraq and he's fighting terrorists in Iraq because apparently Al Qaeda, uh, uh, Al Qaeda is actually in Iraq and, um, it, he has to like do some fucking weird ass, like, um, uh, die hard level shit to fucking save the country. And then his wife is back in America and gets trapped in, like, a building during a terrorist attack, some shit like that. I don't remember everything, but it was, like, really, really fucking cringy, like, clearly self-insert shit. Like, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a cop who shoots an eight-year-old uh, black kid and is framed uh, as being the good guy because, actually, the eight-year-old black kid could have had a gun or could have had a weapon, but the cop couldn't have known. And so now the government is slandering him as racist, but he's not actually racist. Yeah, it's fucking, it's such a joke. God, I, oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. Ben Shapiro is a dumb fuck. I'm not surprised that he thinks the Iraq war was good. Or anything Bush did at all was good. Xander Hall is jealous the UK has Boris Johnson. America has Joe Biden. Wait, why the fuck would I be jealous the UK has Boris Johnson? What? The eight-year-old was planted there by the media? Oh, yeah. Fuck, I gotta rewatch the fucking Jose video. Yeah, it was like a false flag. It was... Oh, God. To make... The media was trying to make the cops look bad by... I guess they, like... <laughs> found a kid that it died in like a gang shootout so the kid was actually shot by another black person and then they made it look like the cop did it 
what country or group of people were responsible for 9-11. So Al-Qaeda was a group that was funded and provided their weapons in part by Saudi Arabia, who, by the way, are allies of the U.S. that we rely on a lot for oil. Um, on top of that, um, many of the uh, additional weapons and uh, funding that Al-Qaeda had were given to them by America when we were fighting a proxy war in Afghanistan and much of the Middle East with Russia, from my understanding. At least that's what Dylan Burns told me, and Dil Dylan Burns knows a lot about this shit. Um, yeah, it was mostly Saudi Arabia and America, or th from America through Saudi Arabia. America funded terrorist groups in the Middle East to stop communism. Yeah, hyper hyper Hooper. That was that was during um, that was in Afghanistan. Um, the the Russians we were, we fought a proxy war with the Russians uh, to stop the spread of communism, and we gave uh, weapons to the Mujahideen, which were basically like a a sort of like rebel group, uh, basically a terrorist group um, in Afghanistan, and they and those weapons ended up getting into the hands of Al Qaeda um, a few decades later, and then. They were uh, further supplied by Saudi Arabia, and then they did the uh, the big old fucking 9-11 planes into the buildings. Yeah, damn it, America. Or the Soviets, to be more historically. Yeah, Soviets. Soviet Russia, you know what I mean. Russian, Soviets, same thing, okay? Um, all right. Yeah, Ben Shapiro is pretty fucking dumb. Uh, he... <laughs> It's pretty interesting watching him do, try to do things such as the uh, the political compass test or rating presidents. It's a it's a good meme. It's a good meme. Fuck Ben Shapiro. He's a dumb fuck. Hey, I hope you enjoyed my video. If you did, please leave a like and a comment. It helps the video a lot. If you want to see more of my content, please subscribe and ring the bell icon so YouTube actually tells you when I live stream or upload a new video. Also, if you're watching this right after it was uploaded, I should be live in one hour at 1 p.m. PST every day on YouTube and my website xanderhall.com. Please come stop by and say hello. I love seeing new people in chat. Also make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Links are in the description. Join my fan discord if you want to contact me for a discussion or debate through the link in the description as well. If you're feeling extra generous and you can afford it, you can support me financially by donating or subscribing on my website, hitting the join button below the video to become a channel member, or super chatting during my streams. I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching, and have a good one.